my channel my name is Johanna and for those of you who are new here welcome and for those of you who are returning welcome back here on my channel I do planner and planner related videos DIY tutorials art and journal videos and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop and if that is of interest to you please consider subscribing to my channel and if you hit that little notification bell you'll always be notified of when I load a new video Commenting, liking, and sharing does help my channel grow and would be truly appreciated. All right, guys, so what we're going to be doing today is uh, I'll show you how you can make your own traveler's notebook style laminated cover for your skinny mini. I have been promising this video to Miss Wednesday. So, sweetie, finally, I've got this going on. And this style I developed... Um, to fit the mini rings that come with the skinny mini. I haven't come up with the dimensions yet for the classic or the expander because I do know that some people uh, do do that but with everything going on I definitely wanted to get this video out but I'm not even sure if I'll even do a video or if I'll just do a blog post but what I'll actually do today in this video is show you how to make a cover that has a pocket and then also give you the dimensions for a cover that does not because I can see pros and cons of having this front pocket here so this is what we're going to end up making. So let's get started on how you can do that. All right, so I just have a 12 by 12 paper pad here. I find typically um, for this type of thing, it's not gonna last forever. I mean, it's basically laminated paper. You can use something thinner like this, although this does have some nice weight to it. Uh, you can use something thicker, although the thicker the paper, even though we're using a very thin laminate, sometimes the, the shrinkage and the laminating part can't be great, but I mean, really, at this time, just use whatever paper you have. For the first design, you will definitely need something 12 by 12. But for the second design, once I cut it down, you'll see that you could really get away with a copier size paper or eight and a half by 11, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So let me just grab a sheet here, like this one. Oh, and since we're gonna be two, let me grab another one. And if you hear any background noise, I apologize for that. So for this one, this is the one that we're going to do the two pocket style, the one that I just showed you guys. What you need to do is cut this down to eight by 12. So we're gonna do one cut. And with these paper pads, there's always a seam at the top, which is perforated. So that's the side we're going to cut. And then for the other one, we are going to cut this, and actually this isn't a great example because this middle part is, is empty. But maybe we can be strategic because we need this to be eight by 10. So if we, you know what? It's just gonna make it more confusing for you guys. So I'm going to cut this eight, and then I'm going to cut this at 10. Okay, and actually I think it'll still work. So these are our two pieces. We'll start with this one first, and they're actually really straightforward. Now, I can't cut a straight line even if I am cutting on a line, so like that right there, I still couldn't cut it straight. So that's why I use my cutter. I also have a scoreboard where I can make a channel in this to make it easier to fold, but I'm aware that, you know, people are at home, you may not have all the things. And so what I have found is, let's, let's do this as the cover. If you do have a scoreboard, then what you can do is you can put it up to the mark that you wanted to score it at. And I need um, this to be scored at two inches on either side. And then you can take something. Now, of course, I'm not prepared. No, we'll use the scissor. We're just gonna keep it closed. And we're gonna go in the channel. We don't wanna cut it. We just wanna give it a faint folding line. And if you're really slow, 
then you can score it. I don't know if you can see that, but that just does help it fold easier. I mean, you could measure it and mark it, but this just saves that step. But if you are just cutting this by hand and you do not have a cutting board or a scoreboard, okay, what you can do is measure in two inches. Just grab any pen. You won't be able to see this. And go like that. And then measure and go like that. Now I will link a scoreboard and the cutter in the description box below. But again, if you can avoid having to deal with shipping, and it, this isn't essential, honestly, it really isn't, <laughs> then I would definitely recommend just use what you have. Just use what you have. Now that, just drawing the line, will score it a little bit. And then what you can also do is just kind of buff it up against there, because really just we want to give ourselves a guide on folding this. And if you match the bottoms up, then you can be relatively assured that you've got a straight edge all the way to the top. And same for this one, even though we have it scored, I'm still going to match the bottoms up and then just use that as your scoring tool, <laughs> whatever you have handy. And so that's the one that makes the pockets. And then for this middle section, because this ends up being about eight inches, then you can do the same. And this and that middle section is really where a scoreboard will be very useful. But again, we can we can work around that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to make dots at three and a half, four and four and a half, because I do want this to kind of bend over those discs. And then for this, I mean, once the the planner is in there or the notebooks, because they do have the happy notes, you won't be able to see it, but we're gonna just do the full technique just to try to make this as pristine as possible. And so again, you hold your ruler flat and then you just kind of bend this across the side and that gives us our four inch. It doesn't need to be super crisp. Uh, I prefer that it isn't actually. I just want it to be able to bend around those discs once it's laminated. And if you do this, it'll give it something to remember. Not if that makes sense, but it will. <laughs> and and we'll just line it up against the dots and do the same. Okay, and there's that one. Again, you can already see it taking shape where we've already built our spine. We've got the cover. Now this one is actually very decorative, so I don't know that I would need to put a sticker, but all right, we'll use this one. because I don't want to have to worry about finding the center, I tend to like to put things either at this bottom corner or the top corner. And I think that just makes it look like a nicely finished product, although that is crooked. And I might end up putting this in my shop, so <laughs> whatever it is that I reopen. Um, so I do want it to be nice. So there's that one right there. And then for the other cover, it's actually the exact same process, except we're only doing one pocket. And you need at least one pocket uh, because that's where the mini slips in. And when we go to um, the final product, I'll show you what I mean by that. And again, because we're all at home and you may not have all the things, I am trying to do this as easily sourced as possible. I'm assuming you guys have paper. I'm assuming you guys have pens and rulers. And it's trying to make this as user-friendly for you guys. But if you have all the things, if you have the cutters, the scoreboard, all of that, then absolutely use that. 
And so that's going to be our back. That's important to remember. This is going to be our front, but this also should be at eight inches. And then we're gonna do those fold lines again. And to be super exact, you could do three dots, but you only really need two in order to find a straightish line. And once you have made this and you've got your book inside, it, it doesn't really matter because really you just want it to uh, bend around the discs. and then that would be like that and then this one we're also going to be I'll put a sticker and then this one since we do have that fold I'm going to attempt to put something in the middle but I'm not measuring because I'm not about that life <laughs> and there is that we can actually press that down now this only needs, because of the size, an eight and a half by 11, or I think it's like a nine by 11 and a half, just this, the regular laminating pouches. So it's 8.9 by 11.4. This is also a three millimeter. You could do the five. I, I haven't used that, so I, I couldn't speak to the results, but I, I wouldn't see why not. It does make it more sturdy. And because I don't want to waste the, the outside, because this is only eight inches long, I will grab that sticker again, and I'll show you what I mean. So one side, you do want to open this up and butt it against as far as it will go. And really just kind of jam it in there as much as you can jam paper in there and then smooth it out and we'll actually I don't know if you guys can see it sorry my, my desk is tiny um, that right there I don't know if you can see but that's where the laminate ends so that is a lot of product to waste now you could cut it off and try to use it for something else you could just laminate it as is and use this as a washley sampler holder or what I like to do is I'll pick a sticker and again it doesn't matter whether it's transparent or not oh, oh, oh. I also like to pick something that is at least a little coordinating I'm not too concerned if I'm putting it down straight because I can always cut to make it straight and then I can make sort of like a page flag page marker type of thing so that's one and this one we do exactly the same and they both measure eight inches so we're also going to make like a little bookmark page marker thing here and that can go right there now just for brevity's sake I've actually have some samples already made so I'm not going to laminate this and show you these but I will show you two that are just like this okay so these are ones that I had done earlier and then I'll show you the next steps now again because I have it I am going to use my paper cutter and if you have ever laminated anything you know that there is a little air bubble at the edge where it doesn't seal and so you want to avoid that but everything else you want to cut off just to make it a finished edge and you might have noticed that I did not um, corner around the corner for this particular project I actually think it would be detrimental because it's so small um, but what I will do is corner around the actual laminate and then for this off cut I'm going to cut that at six inches I can toss this I can keep it I'm going to toss it and then this I will punch 
it isn't exactly centered so I will cut a little piece off again it doesn't really matter but you know I've got it out anyway and I won't show you this for the next the other one that I have because it's exactly the same process but what you do is so you've got your uh, piece cut down I have a corner rounder so I'm going to corner around the edges but you could also do that by hand again I am always been a proponent of use what you have um, and if you have it great and if you don't then just do it by hand again no big deal and then you can do the same to this although it's not really necessary because it's gonna fit nicely on top of your skinny mini and then to actually create the pockets you will need an exacto um, or there's another name for this, like a utility knife uh, to cut this. And you don't want to cut through. So you just want to go very lightly and cut into that air pocket. And then just skim down. Hopefully your knife can follow the edge of the paper. And then that way you've made your pocket. And then another way you can do that so you don't keep skipping on the pocket is once you have it, then you can kind of slide it in that way. Although do be careful because you are bringing a blade close to your body. And so there is that. Now, I don't think I scored these. Yeah, I didn't score these. So I'm just gonna have to kind of bend it Although, let's see, can we? It, yeah, it does make it infinitely harder. The one that I showed you at the beginning of the video, I had pre-scored, so I definitely would recommend that. Now, um, with this, it's not going to keep closed on its own because I don't recommend actually putting the front cover in here and the back cover in here. It can just make it a little wonky. So you can put the back cover in here. And when I've tested this out on my Skinny Classic, I just didn't like how it opened. I don't know if it'll be different with this. I mean, I guess that's okay. But really, I had just designed that to be an extra pocket. But the problem that I discovered when I made this is, well, I have that pocket there now, so I can't punch there because that's typically where I punch to um, put the elastic. So what I've done for this one is I used this kit because I don't have one of those long arm crocodiles and you just follow the instructions and then you can put a grommet there in the middle. But again, if you don't have that, really you just need a hole. So I'm going to take this out. And again, the process for this one and for the one with only one pocket is exactly the same. And you can, and because I will put a one of these, um, I can just sort of figure out where I want it. And I want it to be on that center line that we just folded. And I'm gonna do an X. And you probably can't see it well because of the glare, if there is one. I won't know until editing. And then just sort of cut that out. And then when I fit in the grommet, then that will go in just a lot easier. It does come with a punching tool, but that hasn't worked for me. So you would have that, you fit the grommet, you follow the instructions. If you have the crocodile, you'd follow the instructions, it'd be a lot easier. Once all the craziness dies, I might get it because it just would make things easier on me. But if you don't have that, um, if you do have an awl, or if you have a push pin with a little plastic topper just to give you some stability, uh, then you can just uh, make a hole and then just kind of make it bigger. Because I've seen people do that who make laminated traveler's notebooks because really, again, what you need is a hole to put the elastic in. 
So let me put this to the side. Okay, and then the way you do this is you insert the back cover in the back pocket. Now whether you insert it in the front pocket, that's up to you. Now because this, I don't even know what size this is, but the grommet is huge. I think this is more used for sewing than it is for paper crafting. Uh, if I do my regular knot, it's going to slip through. So if you put a paper clip on here, and it's actually really easy to do. I don't know if you can see, but basically you just unhook one side, you put it through the knot, and then you just kind of wind it around. And you want this to be flat like that so that it can catch like that. And in that way, um, your elastic won't go through and then you can close it up. Now, this green one I had left over from another project I just completed, but when I complete this, cause this will be going in my shop, um, I'm probably gonna I'll put a black one. Uh, this is a two millimeter elastic. Again, if you don't have it, a rubber band works just as well. And then with that little off cut piece, I don't know if you can see it, I did punch this with my arc punch and it isn't, it's less of a page marker because it doesn't go above. Um, but I mean, I think it looks really cute and decorative. And then you can always insert things here, some random stickers, washi samplers or whatever, or you can make the one without the pocket and then you can actually punch right in the front. And let me show you what I mean by that. So this is my skinny classic. And so I don't put a pocket in the front here uh, so that I can punch in the front of it. And on that other example that I showed you, this one right here, you could do the exact same thing. It does make it easier because this I can reach with my crop dial that I have. I just don't have the long arm one, so it doesn't reach that far into it. So you can do that one here if you have the double pockets, or you can do the front punch there if you only have the back pocket, because uh, you really just need something to hold your elastic down. <sighs> All right, guys, well, let me know what you think of this. Uh, I'd, I'd love to know in the comments below. And as always, aloha.